My first tip is simply to point out there are two different types of pen. I'm not talking about different brands. I'm talking about the way the pen controls and releases the ink. We'll look at this one first. This is a fiber tipped pen. If you look at the end, you'll see that at the end of a metal barrel, there's a little dark part. And this is fundamentally a compressed fiber tip. So what are the characteristics of a fiber nib? The biggest one is that we get flexibility in controlling the flow of ink onto the paper. And so if I press heavily, I get a much stronger line than if I draw with a light touch. By using less pressure and by going faster, I get a lighter line. By going slower, I get a darker, heavier line because I give more time for ink to flow through the nib onto the paper. And I can get some very light lines. So using a fiber nib pen can give me a lot more line options if I want them. But a warning, if we press too heavily, we can ruin our nib because they're not terribly hard. Our second type of pen is a ballpoint pen. And it's exactly as it sounds. At the tip of the pen, there's a metal ball held in place and the ink flows around the ball as it moves on the paper. What are the characteristics of a ballpoint ink pen? The main one, is you get this wonderful even line, almost regardless of how quickly you draw it. And there are times where that's exactly the sort of line you want. It's also a much sturdier way of getting ink on paper. The ballpoint will certainly last for as long as there's ink in the pen to be used. And of course, there's no better or worse. It's simply what suits you better for the type of drawing you want. My second tip is to use the weight of your line to help indicate distance in your drawing. So here's a series of boxes drawn with my ink ballpoint pen and there is a sense that quite possibly these boxes are moving back in space but if I draw them another way which one of these two rows gives a stronger sense of moving further away as we go along the line. I think it's clearly this second row. Every box in this row was drawn with the same thickness of line, but in this row, thinner nibs were used for each box. This is just one of a number of tips we can use to suggest distance and create a sense of depth in our drawing. I have a number of videos that go into this and more of these techniques in more detail. Third point is that we can use line to indicate shade, shadow, or even local color to indicate something darker than the white of the paper. And we can affect this by drawing lines closely together. And this is called hatching. We might want a darker color than what we get with hatching. And in that case, we can do cross hatching where we literally cross the hatching with more hatching. Cross hatching doesn't have to be at right angles. For a different effect, we can cross at a very slight angle. In fact, there are many, many ways to hatch and cross hatch. Which each visually create very different effects in our drawings. Let's compare two ways of cross hatching the same little thumbnail sketch. Let's try this again with a different approach to the hatching. Which approach to hatching do you think works better? I feel that this approach is far more sympathetic, yet I see this sort of cross hatching over and over again, particularly with beginner drawers. So we need to be thoughtful about the direction of our line in cross hatching.
My fourth tip in drawing with pen is about mistakes and simply don't worry about them so much. Yes, we can't erase our ink lines, so we should just relax and enjoy the medium, enjoy the wonderful advantages of ink over pencil. It's not as big a problem as it seems. Let me promise a mistake will always seem worse when you've done it and it will not be as bad at the end. Somehow it's when there's so much blank paper around and you haven't drawn very many lines that mistakes seem so much worse. But later, there'll be so much more detail around the drawing that the mistake won't be nearly as obvious. And a very important tip I would give you on that is always add the correct line. Don't leave the mistake. If you put the correct line in, the brain will favor it. It wants to see the right line and then the wrong line won't be as noticeable. If you don't put the right line in, the brain will only have the wrong line to look at. So My give it a go. tip for pen drawing is to learn which direction is what I call the comfort zone direction for your drawing. We can draw lines in lots of different directions. We can draw them one way and then back the other way. We can draw them downwards, we can push them upwards. We can go diagonally one way or diagonally another way. And we can do our diagonals the opposite way. And we have curves as well. The important thing to realize is that every one of us finds lines easier to draw more accurately in one direction than another. A lot is to do with whether we're right-handed or left-handed. Sometimes it's just one of those things. For me, I'm certainly more accurate drawing lines downwards than upwards. And if I'm drawing horizontal lines, going from left to right is certainly more accurate for me. If I'm doing a diagonal line, then going from bottom up is more accurate. But also going from lower to upper is more accurate than going from upper to lower. So if I need to draw a line this way, then this isn't so accurate. This is even less accurate. I can turn my paper and now I can draw that line in my comfort zone. And I find this particularly works for drawing circles. With circles or semicircles, it's best illustrated with a square box. If I want to draw a circle and if I think of it as in four quadrants, then for me, that's the most accurate quadrant to draw most easily. So rather than trying to draw the rest of them with an awkwardness that may make the line wobble, I can simply turn my paper so that every quadrant is in my compass. My zone. sixth point concerns drawing lines that involve perspective angles, or really any angle at all, such as these tower angles. And it's to use our pen as a device to measure the angles. So for instance, this angle here, I can use my pen to show me, and I like to put a dot and then I compare that and it's just a tiny bit too low. So, and if I want to come down on this side, then I do the same thing on this side. And that's a tiny bit too low. So I put the dot a bit higher up. That lets me get these angles accurately. And now we have this line that's coming down here. And again, I can measure the angle. And that's too high, so I measure the angle. And it's still a little bit too high. Now I know that I've got this line. And now I have this angle and these angles and any other angles I need accurately captured. This works great drawing from a reference photo. If I'm drawing from life, 
I can still use my pen. I hold it in front of my eyes, maybe 15, 20 centimeters with one eye shut. I align the pen with the angle of whatever I'm looking at to draw and I just bring it straight down onto the paper. It sounds as if it would be horribly inaccurate. It works literally unbelievably well. So use our pen to measure our line angles. My seventh pen drawing tip is really quick. And that is, it's easier to draw a smooth straight line if we move with a little bit of speed. Where possible, draw from the shoulder, not from the elbow or the wrist, or worst of all, from the fingers. While going slowly can be an advantage in some things. For line work, it gives time for wobbles and tremors and general loss of confidence. Of course, we're not talking of so fast that we're careless. With a little bit of practice, each of us can discover at what speed we draw our smoothest straight lines before they start to get out of control. And my eighth tip is when you're drawing with pen, because we can't erase any lines, we need to be careful with objects that are in front of other objects. For instance, if I'm drawing a building behind, but then there are some people in front, it looks a bit messy. If, however, I plan my drawing just enough that I draw the lines of the foreground items before I draw the lines of the background items, I can avoid lines going through them. Another good little tip is to stop these lines just before they touch the figures. It creates almost like a little bubble around them, which, which helps them stand out more effectively. It really does help separate the background from the foreground and add to a sense of depth. So now I'm going to show you a quick speed it up drawing that I did of the Scottish National Gallery in Edinburgh, in which I use all of these tips. So I hope you can see how very practical they are. I'm Stephen Travers. I hope you have fun drawing in ink and I'll see you next time. Bye.